We all have those moments where because we're angry, stressed, afraid, or just not thinking, that we make a bad decision, take a bad action that makes our lives more complicated and difficult than it needs to be. Which is interesting when you think about it, because our lives are nothing but a series of moments. If we make good decisions in those moments, life gets easier and more successful. If we make bad decisions, life gets harder and more complicated. Great improvisers choose to say yes and. Thought without action accomplishes nothing. Ding moments change everything. One step, one yes and, one improvisation at a time. I'm passionate about this topic because I obviously love improv comedy, but I also went through a period of my life where I almost was willing to settle for something way less than I wanted and deserved simply because I didn't want things to change. See, a few years back, I was in a relationship, and it was great. She was great. We got along great. We liked each other. We loved each other. Problem is, we had some long-term compatibility issues. It's going to make it really hard for us to get married and raise a family, which is important to both of us. Uh, really good in the short term, really bad for the long term, kind of like eating a lot of fast food. <laughs> if you see her, don't tell her I said that. So we tried to work it out for a little while, but then one day she came to me and said, Avish, I think it's time for us to break up so we can each find someone more suited for us. And that was good. It was an amicable breakup, and I was fine with it. Until a few weeks went by, and I started to miss her. And that little voice started in the back of my head. And if you know that voice, you know this is a bad mental headspace to be in. Because you start doing things you really shouldn't be doing. Like writing and sending emails you shouldn't send. <laughs> Making phone calls at hours of the night you should not make phone calls. Putting together and sending mixtapes. Yes, I tried the power of the mixtape. Now, let me, a little bit of advice. If you ever find yourself in this position, tempted to put together a mixtape, don't do it. It doesn't work. There has never been a breakup in the history of relationships where two people have gotten back together because one person put together an awesome mixtape for the other. Like, <gasps> Phil Collins, our love is against all odds. Like, no. Oh, that, that's very nice of you, thank you. I've never gotten sympathy at that before. Thank you very much. The little side note, don't do it. <laughs> and my situation was no different. We did not get back together as a result of my awesome, my gitchy mixtape. But here's the thing, things worked out great. In that moment, I didn't care. All I, wanted to, all I knew was things were uncomfortable, and they had changed, and I didn't like it, and I just wanted things to go back the way they were before. Even though all those long-term compatibility issues were still there. And this is what happens to us when a change occurs, that instinct is, I wish we could just go back to the way we were before. Right? That's why great improvisers don't say, how do I get back? They say, how can we get to a place that's even better than before this change happened? I'm probably the world's only motivational improviser, which means I'm kind of like a motivational speaker, but I use improv comedy ideas to make my points. Now, you may be wondering, what, how does that possibly work? Well, I'm going to let you know right now by demonstrating improv comedy for you. Here we go. Once upon a time, there was a man who loved to go outdoors and just be in nature. And he loved to go into caves, because he just liked to be uh, secluded by himself. He loved to build arcs. 
He loved to dig holes and go hide in them. He was digging under the golf course looking for gophers because that's what he did. He discovered something interesting. There was a, he discovered something so boring. He believes that if he dug deep enough, he would get to China, which is where all the jobs are now, evidently. And he found this gopher, and the gopher looked at him, and the gopher bit him in the nose. And what he would then do is he would say, look, I'm going to sue you for hitting me. When suddenly from behind the cave came this man who said, well, came a woman, a beautiful woman. He said, I'm going to fall in love with you for kissing me so lovely. Who said, well, I brought these encyclopedias because I heard you like knowledge. And that is when he realized, that is when he passed out because there was no oxygen getting into the hole and died. So that's an example of improv comedy. And right now some of you are thinking, what on earth is that possibly gonna have to do to help me with my job, my role as an association executive or an associate member? Well, if you're thinking that, I invite you to think about one thing, that life isn't scripted. No matter how much we want it to be, with our plans, our agendas, our day planners, our goals, our visualizations, our dream boards, life is the ultimate improvisation. And just when you think you've got it all figured out, the universe comes along, throws you a curveball, and says, ding, now deal with this. It's like you're jumping from ding to ding to ding to ding. Think better, not back, and then take bold action. Focus on what you can control, let go of the rest. In every moment, ding or otherwise, you have the option of saying yes and or yes but. Improvisers choose to respond with yes and. Yes but is negative, yes and is positive. Yes but is confrontational, yes and is collaborative. Yes but stops progress, yes and keeps things moving forward. Yes and is a powerful, open-minded, creative, innovation leading to mindset that keeps conversations moving unless you explore ideas. Now, I need to pause for a minute because I need to talk to my realist friends in the room. Because right now, some of you are sitting there thinking, well, that's great in an improv game, but you can't always just say yes, yeah, sometimes you disagree. And you're right. This is not a literal technique. It's a mentality. So I'm not suggesting that if like the office slacker comes to you and says, hey, I haven't worked on this project for three weeks, can you do it for me? That you say, yes, and let me pick up your dry cleaning. And as two years of marriage has taught me, if your wife comes to you and says, does this outfit make me look fat? <laughs> yes, and old. Like, no, <laughs> right, you don't. So it's not a literal technique, you don't just say yes and everything, but it's a mentality. And we're talking about ding responses, a ding moments and default responses. And for so many of us, when ding happens, when an unexpected event occurs, when someone comes to us with a suggestion or an idea that is outside of what we want, our first reaction is yes, but. All I'm suggesting we do is we change that default response to yes and. Here's what happens when you do that. Number one, you maintain and build rapport. Because you know from being yes, butted how much it annoys you. If you think about the worst customer service experiences in your life, there was someone saying yes, but behind it. When you say yes and, you maintain rapport. What yes and lets you do is explore the idea as well, which is where the seeds of innovation start. It's not just, yeah, but that's a bad idea, or yeah, but we tried that three years ago, it didn't work. It's, yes and, why do you think that's a good idea? Yes and, how do you think that would work? Yes and, what's a way we could implement that? Then you tie it to your old challenges. That exploration is the start of creativity. Now you can see from playing this, outside the scope, but from a teamwork, leadership type mentality, imagine how effective you could be if the people on your staff, your board, your committee, and your membership treated each other with a little more yes and, how much more you get done, how much more rapport there'd be. But so often, we don't get those multiple chances. An opportunity comes by, you say yes, but it's gone. So my question to you is, what are you saying yes, but to? What opportunities are you letting pass you by because you are so sure things are a certain way and you're committed to staying in your comfort zone? 
What ding moments could you be creating for yourself to change the game and break out of your rut and bust through that plateau for you and your organization by simply exploring ideas with a yes and mindset? Because really, the thing to say yes and to is not the stuff you're already comfortable with, but say yes and to the stupid ideas, to the expensive ideas, to the ones that are impossible and you know you won't work. Because the ideas that come from that, you won't implement, but they're the ones that give you a new perspective that let you find those ding moments.